So the next topic is going to be relative extrema of functions of several variables. A local minimum, so I'm, basically this holds for minimum and maximum, but today I'm going to be aiming at minimizing, um, minimizing risk. So I'll, I'm going to talk about local minimum. Of a function f is a point x0 that has the property that f of x0 is less than or equal to f of x in some neighborhood around x0. So epsilon is just some value greater than 0. And so I'm making an interval here that's centered on x0. And at every point in that interval, so every point x in that interval, x, uh, f of x is greater than or equal to f of x0. And if that's true, I'm going to call f of x0 a local minimum. And so this is, this is, I think everybody has a good idea of what a minimum of a, or a maximum of a function is. Uh, this is just a way to say the same thing mathematically. And then this word extrema just means that a point is either a local minimum or a local maximum. So it's a kind of extreme value of the function. If f is twice di differentiable, so if the function f has two derivatives, and if the second derivative is continuous, then any local extremum is a critical point of f. So that means that f prime evaluated at x0 is going to be equal to 0. And then we can also use the second derivative test. So this is the second order condition to classify uh, a critical point as either a minimum or a maximum. And so I, if I have a f prime of x0 strictly less than 0, that's going to be a local maximum. If f primes of the, oops, those should be double primes. Um, so if the second derivative evaluated at x0 is greater than 0, that's going to be a local minimum. And if it's equal to 0, then anything is possible. So either of these two, or it can be neither. So that's a, a brief review of how, how this works for single variable functions. Now let's think about a function of n variables. So a local minimum of a function of n variables, so remember that's what this notation means. So f is a function that goes from an n-dimensional space to a single value, so a single real number. <clears throat> so a local minimum is a point x0 in that n-dimensional space. And it's exactly the same, same criteria as before, except now x0 is going to be a vector of n values. It's all n of the inputs to this function f x is also a vector of n values. And I'm just going to make a, so in two dimensions, you know, this would just be a circle. All right, so all the points that have distance from x0 less than epsilon. So a circle and all the points inside it, so I guess technically a disk. Um, it becomes a sort of a ball in higher dimensional spaces. So if x is within epsilon of x0, then the smallest I can make that function is f of x0. So if that's true, I'm going to call f of x0 a local minimum. And again, every local extremum is going to be a critical point. So if I take the gradient of my function f and evaluate that at x0, I'm going to get 0. If f is twice differentiable and has continuous second order partial derivatives, then, so remember that was my condition for being able to exchange the order of taking partial derivatives. So this matrix, um, the Hessian, so the sort of matrix of second partial derivatives, evaluated at the point x0. So you have to compute the Hessian first and then evaluate it at x0. That's going to be a symmetric matrix and then remember from our linear algebra lectures, a symmetric matrix has real eigenvalues. 
So the second order condition, then, for a function of n variables is going to be if all of the eigenvalues of the Hessian evaluated at x naught, so I, I compute the Hessian, that gives me this matrix of functions. I evaluate each of those functions at the point x naught. Then I find the eigenvalues of that matrix. If all of the eigenvalues are strictly greater than 0, then that corresponds to a local minimum. If all the eigenvalues are strictly less than 0, that corresponds to a local maximum. If it has positive eigenvalues and negative eigenvalues, then you have something called a saddle point. And what that looks like is, imagine if you have a plane, and then the, a function of two variables is going to be a surface above that plane. A saddle point is something where if I go this way, I go over a hill like that. So going straight ahead, it looks like a maximum to me. And then going left to right, the function goes like that. So if you were going this direction, it would look like a minimum. And if you're going this direction, it would look like a maximum. And that looks like, uh, looks like a saddle, which uh, if anybody doesn't know what that is, that's just uh, like the chair you put on a horse before you ride it. Um, which kind of has that shape. It's more comfortable than sitting on a local maximum, I guess. <clears throat> and then the fourth possibility is that the, so when I, I compute the Hessian evaluated at the point x naught, I end up with a singular matrix. So this is going to be a matrix that has one or more zero eigenvalues. And this is going to be the same thing as what happens when I had the second derivative being 0. So now anything can happen. I can have a saddle point, I can have a minimum, or I can have a maximum. So it's basically, when I say anything can happen, what I really mean is if you have a singular matrix for your Hessian, then you're not able to classify the critical point as a minimum or a maximum or a saddle point. So let's go through some quick examples here. So suppose I make my function f of xy, x squared plus xy plus y squared. I can compute the gradient of that. I get 2x plus y and x plus 2y. And you can see right away that if I evaluate that at 0, 0, that's going to give me uh, a critical point. So the, the origin is a critical point. When I compute the Hessian, there's no x's or y's left. So this isn't the Hessian evaluated at a particular point, evaluated at 0, 0. This is the, the Hessian everywhere. So it's also, if I, if I put in 0, 0 here, I'll get the same matrix. And sort of in our linear algebra lectures, I skipped actually how you compute eigenvalues. So I'm just going to use R to compute these things. Um, probably not worth even trying to do by hand if there's a 3 by 3 matrix or bigger. <clears throat> so first thing I'm going to do is just make a matrix A that has 2, 1, 1, 2 in it. Eigen is the function that computes an eigenvector eigenvalue decomposition or factorization. And then it returns a list. And I'm going to use this dollar sign operator to pluck only the values element off that list. And it turns out the eigenvalues are 3 and 1. So they're both strictly greater than 0. So since both eigenvalues are greater than 0, 0, 0 is a local minimum. OK. And so hopefully, if, if uh, x squared plus xy plus y squared had a local minimum, uh, if I just put a minus sign in front of each term. That's basically doing exactly the same problem, but upside down. So this really ought to have a local maximum. So I'll first compute the, first compute the gradient. And again, that's trivial to see that 0, 0 is the point that satisfies that. So 0, 0 is the critical point. This time, when I compute the Hessian, I get the negative of the previous Hessian. Use r again to compute the eigenvalues. And now I get negative 1, negative 3. 
And so both of these are strictly less than zero. So since both eigenvalues are less than zero, zero, zero now corresponds to a local maximum. And then third and final example, if I now let my function be x squared plus 3xy plus y squared, so my gradient is going to be 2x plus 3y, 3x plus 2y. And again, it should be obvious that 0, 0 is going to be the critical point. So it's just 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 is going to be 0. 0, 0 is a critical point. But now the, the matrix, so you can sort of see when you look at these for a while, if, if this value is greater than what's on the diagonal, then um, it's not going to have kind of the nice properties that we like. So this, for instance, can never happen with a variance-covariance matrix. If you look at a value on the off-diagonal, and then you look down at what's on the diagonal in that column and what's on the diagonal in that row, if you multiply those two things, um, you multiply the square roots of those two things together, it has to be bigger than this. So now I'm going to use r again to compute the eigenvalues. And now I get 5 and negative 1. And so I have one eigenvalue that's greater than 0 and one eigenvalue that's less than 0. And so now this point 0, 0 is going to be a saddle point. So that means you know, going one direction, you go over like that. And going the perpendicular direction, you drop and go back up like that. Okay, and now, so the, those three were, were pretty simple because everything was just a, a degree two term. When I was taking derivatives, the, um, the Hessian ended up being constant. And so I just want to go through one quick example of how exactly how this works when it's not. So now I'm going to put something to the three halves power here. So that's not ever going to disappear when I take derivatives. It's not ever going to become constant when I'm taking derivatives. So the first order condition says I have to compute the gradient of f of xy and then find the point xy that makes the gradient equal to the zero vector. So the gradient is 2y and then 2x plus 3y times the square root of 1 minus y squared. But if you notice, this just has a y in it. This has an x in it and a y in it. And so if I put in 0, 0 again, I'm going to get 2 times 0 plus 2 times, uh, 2 times 0 here, then 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 times 1. So again, 0, 0 is going to be the critical point. The second order condition, so now I end up with a Hessian that's 0, 2, 2, and now I have kind of a complicated function of y for my, my 2, 2 entry in my Hessian. And so this is something I, you know, there's no way I could tell R to take the eigenvalues of this. So what you have to remember is it's a test at the critical point. So to figure out what matrix I want to take the eigenvalues of, I have to evaluate the Hessian at the critical point. So I need to take 0, 0, plug in those values here, and that's going to give me then a matrix that's just numbers, and then that's something I can go ahead and compute the eigenvalues of. So if I have uh, 0, 0, when I plug in 0 for y, I'm going to get 3 minus 0 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0, so 3 divided by 1. So this is my Hessian at the point, evaluated at the point 0, 0. So I'll just use, I'll use r again. Did I skip it here? Oh, no, I just made it a little bit smaller. So here, I, to make it fit on the slide, I kind of packed it all into one um, one command. So this command that I have highlighted here, this is what was creating the matrix A. So this is just a matrix of 0, 3, 3, 2. Oops. So it's supposed to be 0, 2, 2, 3. Um, when you take the eigenvalues of this, uh, you get one positive and one negative. And so this has a saddle point as a critical point. 